CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. Um, uh, Doc, sorry, uh, my daughter's crying in between your speech there. As you can see, I'm no longer the boss of my household. Um, yeah, it's for me, just firstly, thank you to Haroon, um, to Doc, um, and to, to the whole of CSA, I think, uh, you know, for the support that I've received over a long period of time. Um, I think initially to to back me as a 22-year-old, and then I think the most important thing was to support me through that growth period. And I'm very grateful to all the people that I've had the opportunity and met a lot of good people along along the way in, in CSA, and no more than, than yourself and, and, and Doc Musuji, who have been pillars of strength throughout um, my time as a South African captain. Um, I think when I told the, the team a couple of nights ago, it was... Uh, a really tough night. I didn't really manage to get too many words out, um, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping to make it through this this speech as a, without uh, too much emotion. But um, I think I need to start with my my family. Um, you know, uh, I think uh, I, I was I'm so grateful for the support that I've received from my my parents and my brother throughout uh, this period. Um, I don't think that I would have been able to endure. The pressures and um, the ups and downs of the job without the support of so, so many wonderful people around me. And I think no more than my family who have been a pillar of strength throughout this period of time. Um, and I, I just want to say thank you to them. I, uh, I know it's been a tough few days for them also to, to let, let go of what has been a dream of mine for, for so long. Um, but I'm grateful for the support. I think also I need to thank my wife Morgan and my two kids. Uh, you know, the last part of my... Career has certainly been the most enjoyable to be able to share all the moments with them. Um, you know, to go home at night after a tough day's play or a successful day's play and to know that um, your own family is there to support you is something that has been a highlight of the, the back end of my career. Um, there's been lots of sponsors along the way. Um, you know, SACA also, the Players Association for, for the growth and support that they've given players in the game. Um, and I think for me, um, as I said, the hardest part was saying goodbye to, to the team. Um, for so long, uh, the Protest environment has been uh, my family, um, you know, the players I've grown close to over many, many years um, and, and formed so many wonderful relationships. Um, and uh, I will cherish those, those relationships from, f for the rest of my life. I think uh, for, um, for me to be a part of a team where you know, it's so diverse and we've been able to grow a team culture as strong as we have to see the strength of quality of players that we have in that environment now to be a part of leading that and growing that and nurturing that I think is something that will, will be with me um, and, and, and real highlight of, of my career. Um, I really wish the Proteas now um, all the success in the world. I hope they go from strength to strength. I hope the players there, you know, really embrace the opportunities that come their way. Um, and really give our fans something um, to, to be proud of in the years to come. Um, I know that I'll be somewhere, wherever I am on the couch or, or part of the, some, some organization, I don't know where it is right now, but I know that I'll be a, a big supporter and a fan of the team for many, many, well, for the rest of my life. Um, I think that I have to pay tribute to the supporters, as I said out on, on the field, you know, to the people who have approached me over the, the many years of my career on the streets, um, the fans that have bought tickets to come into stadiums, um, the people who've stayed up late, sent messages. Um, I think that's, that's the type of people that I've always played with. Um, I've always been a determined player. Um, I don't think I've ever been a player that's had the best technique, but I've always been able to find a way and, um, and, and leave it all out in the field. And I'm, I'm just really grateful for all the support that I've received over the years. And I just want to say thank you. Graham, can you just uh, run us through the emotions you were going through watching, watching your team for the last time, trying to fight it out for, the, for one last draw? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's something that we've we've become really good at is, you know, not, you know, never letting go, you know, and I think um, we've, we've certainly been outplayed in this test match, um, but we still found a way to take it as, as deep as possible. Um, 
I think the determination and the skill and, and the mental strength the guys showed today, um, a lot of guys changing their natural game plans. Um, I mean, it would have been a wonderful fairy tale if we had hung on there. But I think I saw enough qualities today in, in what the guys showed that I think the protests will be you know, really strong for a period of time. I think um, the attitudes and the, the strength of character we saw today is, is what this team is all about. Graham, um, of all your achievements, I know it's difficult now. What has been the hardest? Sure, there's been there's been so many. But I, th I, th I think uh, as a leader, when you you start to figure out um, the type of players, the type of people, the type of environment that you want, and then you see it grow into to what it has been over the last period of time, uh, I think that's that for me has been the greatest achievement. I think to create the Proteus culture, to be a part of growing that in this environment. Um, I think it's been really special, you know, Doc will tell you we were all a part of that um, and it's something that the, the current crop of players are very, very proud of and I'd love to see that grow from strength to strength over the, the next period of time. Um, but there's been so many wonderful victories around the world, um, you know, I, I think winning in England, Australia, um, remaining unbeaten for a lengthy period of time and our, our, our record away from home is something that I'm certainly proud of as a leader. From from a from a personal perspective, you know, this this 2700s. Um, I probably think back to the most meaningful ones, maybe the 154 to win the series in England. Um, you know, I think that's the one that always sort of stands out in my mind. You know, 100 in Perth when we were chasing 414 to set everything up uh, and going on to win that series. I think those those moments, you know, certainly stand out. Um, you know, as I said on TV, you know, when I, when I started my professional career, I mean, all I used to hear about was my grip and my stance and, uh, and that uh, I needed to change a lot of things. Um, so to be sitting here 17 and a bit thousand runs later, um, I think is a, hopefully an example to a lot of people that maybe don't have as much talent as, as other people, that if you're determined and you work hard and, and you're resilient, um, that there's still a lot that you can achieve in life, not only in sports. So. Grant, can you just sort of take us through the decision the last couple of days and sort of how you made up your mind and sort of how you came to the final decision? Yeah, it's, it's been on my mind before the series started. Um, I think it's, the hard part is just to have the courage to, to make the decision. It's something that I've not, only known for so long in my life. You know, I think being 33, a lot of people say you've still got a lot of years left, you know. But, it felt like the time was right for me, um, but you know I think the, the the want in me was to do it before the test match started. Um, but with stuff that was going on with my daughter being in and out of hospital, you know you you kind of get distracted and put things off. And you know I think, but to to get that last step, I, I took it in the game. Um, I realised that this is the place where I wanted to to finish my career. Um, I didn't want to you know, hang on too long and, and finish it in a place where I didn't feel it was right, you know. And I think for me to have uh, finished at Newlands where it all started, it felt right. Um, and as I say, it just took courage just to get that last 5% to finally commit to, to the decision. Yeah, you've never had a dull series against Australia, <laughs> but um, where does this one rate? Could you try to be parochial, but what did you think about that team you played in the previous? Uh, I think credit to Michael and, and, and his team. Um, any away series victory is a, a big box to tick. Um, you know, uh, I think that they've, they've certainly deserved the series win. I think uh, it was all set up for a great test match, but they, they've, they've certainly outplayed us in this game. I think uh, you know, they won the toss on a good surface and made it count, and we were always behind the game. And again, I think reverse swing became a factor, and they managed to get it, and, and we didn't in, in this test match. Um, I think it's uh, from a personal perspective, it's been a, a challenging series with with the injuries that we've had, uh, the, the couple of curveballs that we've had along the way, and I think it's it's been a fighting series for us more than a a, a well played series, and I, and um, you know I think the the strength of character has made us hang in as long as we have in this, this test series because I think Australia have certainly played uh, the better cricket um, throughout.
Graham, um, for a couple of years now, maybe even more than that, uh, you have spoken occasionally about the, the temptation to become a sort of a rank and file batsman uh, rather than the captain. It's been speculated in the media. You've actually discussed it a little bit yourself. Um, was there any temptation at any stage to, to ditch the captaincy and, and, and just bat for South Africa? Oh, look, I, I'd be lying to you if there weren't times that I considered that. Um, but um, the way that I felt now is I felt that it was time to, to move on. Um, you know, I haven't uh, had my best series. I mean, I felt really good uh, in the two past series that we've had and, and scored runs. But um, I think knowing that the, the end was near has, has made it difficult uh, for me to find the right space to perform in. And um, I've certainly... Uh, you know, had no doubt that this was the time to, to finish uh, like I have. Okay. Um, we're talking a lot, made about how people, the general public, don't quite comprehend your achievements and you're underappreciated. Do you feel underappreciated and why, if do you, do you think that is in South Africa? Um, I think any leader in sport in South Africa is going to have many ups and downs and you need to be able to live with that if, you, if you're going to captain or well, certainly this team, um, you know, uh, as fast as people jump on your back, it's it's the same when you when you're doing well. They get behind you and support you. And you know, I think uh, I've grown with a lot of people. You know, I think um, I do remember a lot of the positives that people have said to me on the streets, the the messages I've received over the years, that the public support, um, and I think that's what will stay with me for for the rest of my life. Um, you know. I, I think uh, for me, it's something that I've been extremely proud of to, to captain South Africa, and I'll never see it in a in a negative way at all. Um, you know, people in the public are entitled to their opinions, and and you know, very passionate and proud of of their sporting teams, and and demand a, a high level of expectation. You know, rightly so. So, as a leader of that environment, you know, you need to be able to cope with that for a lengthy period of time. Last, Graham, um, what are the challenges for the team ahead? And uh, I'm talking not, not only in terms of personnel and uh, filling the gaps left by some great players, but things like uh, pitches in, in this country, perhaps. I mean, have you got any thoughts on those? I don't know if this is the right platform to get into that right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's some important things that, that need to tight, be tightened a little bit. I think the environment now, you know, an environment needs to be created that, that can, can create success. Um, for, for these players. Um, I think the leadership group now is going to be a crucial factor going forward and, and how they um, galvanise the players and, and get them in the right direction um, and get them working well um, and focus on what's to come. Um, obviously, over the last period of time, the team has lost a lot of experience, but there is a lot of wonderful players there who have played a lot of cricket around the world. And I'd, I'd love to see it now go from strength to strength. There's a nice uh, bit of energy and youth around the team. And you'd love to see that um, go well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think there, there are certain challenges uh, on the exterior also that, that need to be met. I, you know, I'd love to play a role in helping you know, Cricket South Africa with, with those things. I and mean, who knows where that's going to be in, in the future. But you know, I feel that I've gained a lot of experience over the years, uh, worked with a lot of people. And I feel I have still a lot to offer South African cricket. Graham, South Africa's had a, obviously, as a country's had a difficult past, and obviously politics still brings an extra dimension. How much of, has, of, of the politics of South Africa has had an impact on you during your career and maybe even your decision to pull up stones? It's certainly had nothing to do with my decision, um, no role at all. Um, you know, when I, when I took over, there were certain uh, phases that, that needed to be met, um, certain responsibilities a leader needed to, to meet in the environment. And um, when I look at the team now, I, I can be hugely proud of the, the diversity, the, the, the quality of, of players from, on all fronts that have come through um, and stand their ground as, as equals amongst everybody in the world. Um, I say the diversity of this team is our strength. Um, and I've, I've certainly been proud to, to build that environment and to embrace it. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly there were challenges along the way. Um, and I, you know, was grateful for the support that we received, the leadership we received around the team. And um, obviously my man management skills along the way have, have played a big role in, in helping us overcome some of those things.
Brian, three months ago when you were sitting on the pitch with King Pinky with Jack Kellis, um, <laughs> were you thinking of this moment or were you possibly even a little envious that he was, didn't have to go into that anymore? Uh, no, I mean, uh, it certainly was on my mind already then. Um, I think, you know, for me, when Gary left, uh, that was sort of when the process started for me, I think. Um, you know, when he left as coach, uh, that's when, for myself, the, the, the thought sort of, I think, probably entered my mind. Um, and it's been a period of time of trying to understand that and process that. Um, you know, as I say, with... With everyone around you telling you 33, for you to believe you're still 33 and that you still have a lot to offer. Um, I still feel that I could perform and, and perform well over the next period of time, but I, I certainly have uh, a real peace in, inside of myself that this was the time for me to go. John? Uh, Graham, just, um, you, you covered a little bit of this, but just how difficult is it to captain South Africa? Guys, I think today is, is a day that I, I would like to celebrate that opportunity. Um, <clears throat> I think the challenges are always well documented and, and spoken about and you know, maybe over elaborated at times. Um, people look into things that maybe aren't always there. But I think it's a huge privilege and an opportunity to lead this country. Um, you know, it's a very proud nation and a really proud sporting nation and I've been privileged to lead that for, for 12 years. And I only see that as a highlight in my life. Uh, you spoke about the highlights, are there anything that you possibly get in not achieving throughout your career? Uh, I think the natural thing would have been to, to have won a, a World Cup. You know, that would have been ticking all the boxes and I'm sure that a lot of people were right, if only. Um, but, you know, I, I think that dream remains for me. You know, I would love to see a South African team go and win a World Cup now. I think once they do, that we're going to win many. Um, you know, and I'll certainly be as proud as anybody if they, they go on and win in any of these next two tournaments. Um, but I think the rest for me are, can be fulfilled. You know, I think for so long it was winning in England, winning in Australia, competing in the subcontinent. You know, and I think we've, we've managed to tick all those boxes along the way. So uh, from, from, I think from a team perspective, probably the only thing was being an ICC tournament. Not beating Australia? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think for me, that is disappointing, um, but to have won twice away in Australia, I think probably hurts Australians more. Um, <laughs> so I'll take that as a positive. Michael? Graham, you, you've spoken about what a privilege it is to lead South Africa. Who do you personally think would be the ideal replacement for you? Um, I don't think it's, it's wise of me to get into that right now. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think I need some time also to process that that answer. Um, you know, my mind has been on leading this environment, um, creating a, a, a group of senior players uh, that hopefully can take this environment forward. Um, but it is going to be important. I think Russell's role as coach and, and his staff now, you know, have a crucial role in galvanizing this environment, creating an environment that can be successful. Um, and that's going to be important. And whoever the next guy is, I, I certainly wish him well. Okay, well, after 12 years as, as a player and then as a captain, is an abiding feeling, an abiding um, one word that you can encapsulate being captain? I mean, is it joy, happiness, pain, sadness, what kind of thing? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can sum up 12 years in one word. Um, but as I say, it's been a, it's been a privilege. Um, when I look back and I look at that test cap that I've had from the start of my career, it's it's worn down now, um, and it's it's had to endure a lot. But um, I think uh, for me, no doubt, it's been a privilege.